Good evening and welcome to our Economic Development Committee meeting, the 2nd of November 2022. Acknowledgement of country. I would like to begin this meeting by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land that we're on here today, and I would like to pay my respect to both elders past, present and emerging. Any apologies, or oh, first of all, present? We have Councillor O'Connor, Councillor McGee, Councillor Bryce, Councillor Goodwin. Any apologies besides Councillor Good Goodsell? Uh, Councillor Marnie. Marnie is present also. Could I have somebody move we accept Councillor Goodsell's apology? Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Yeah. Have a second to thank I'll you. Second it. Thank you, Councillor Goodwin. All those in favour say aye. Uh, Councillor yeah. Leslie has just joined us as well. Thank you. Staff reports 5.1, activation of the Seven Valleys Tourism Brand. Can I have somebody move this report be accepted? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGee. Sorry, I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Goodwin. All those in favour say aye. Uh, we haven't. I'll just um, pass over to Mr Francis now to give a report on that. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor Staten, uh, yeah, look, I've just put together a small PowerPoint presentation here um, to show the different things that have been done. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the allocation towards uh, maximising the... Uh, the activation of the Seven Valleys brand uh, came through in October. So a lot of the things that you'll see in this presentation uh, are things that have just been uh, done previous to that. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about things that are, uh, are planned over the next few months. So the, the Seven Valleys logo has been developed uh, for, for several months now and used on different things. There's an example of the different types of uh, of logos that we have. Uh, we're also going towards the, the Visit Seven Valleys. Obviously, the Seven Valleys brand is evolving. Uh, we're using Visit as well so that it sounds a little bit more kind of tourism friendly, like it's, it's an encouragement to come to the area. Uh, we're also about to launch the members area of the website. And one of those is, a, uh, is to encourage the tourism members, uh, as well as all tourism businesses in the area, to use uh, the Seven Valleys logo on their uh, websites. So we've developed uh, these, uh, which you can see here, which are badges that can be put on on their websites. Um, the uh, Seven Lithgow Visitor Information Centre has been rebranded as that Seven Valleys Visitor Information Centre Lithgow. So we have the Hero Billboard, uh, which is inside the Visitor Centre, which has the Seven Valleys logo on it now. Uh, the Welcome to Seven Valleys uh, board outside the Visitor Centre. Um, and the, there is yeah, a lot of signage around the Visitor Centre, which is, uh, is basically activating that brand. When people walk in, they are under no doubt that they are in the Seven Valleys. All marketing collateral within the Visitor Information Centre is also as you can see on this slide, uh, branded as Seven Valleys. Uh, we've got the two billboards uh, at uh, Mount Lambie and Rivulet Hill, which uh, have been branded for some time as Seven Valleys. Uh, so people uh, will see those as they're passing by uh, through the district. Uh, we have a new uh, visitor app, which uh, is run by the uh, Accredited Visitor Centre Network, uh, which we have signed up to, for, and that is obviously as uh, Seven Valleys Visitor Information Centre Lithgow. Uh, so, yeah, that's seen uh, by uh, lots of people around the, the state. There's active encouragement to download that, uh, that app at all visitor centres around Australia. Uh, there's been a change to all the, uh, uh, the different web-based uh, media that people can find us with, uh, all with uh, search engine optim optimization and management. So we've got uh, uh, the Bing and the Google listings now, uh, which uh, make reference to Seven Valleys Visitor Information Centre Lithgow. 
The website has uh, changed the domain name to uh, sevenvalleys.com.au uh, with seven valleys plastered all over it. Um, we've also got, uh, we've updated the listing with Destination New South Wales, uh, so the Visit New South Wales uh, our website, which is one of the, well, probably the most visited tourism website in Australia, uh, has a listing for Seven Valleys. Uh, some uh, feedback about the Seven Valleys was that we obviously need to get it out there as to what the purpose for Seven Valleys is as part of the activation. So on the website, uh, this slide is what we have put on there. Uh, it can be found on the website. It is uh, a purpose-written uh, article about what the Seven Valleys is. So, uh, yeah, I would encourage people to go onto the website and have a look at that one. Uh, we are developing a new membership prospectus, uh, which is going out to all the members and non-members uh, very, very soon with uh, the offer of a free quarter page advert for signing up to membership. Obviously that, again, is uh, um, has the Seven Valleys branding on it, uh, the business cards of all the staff at Seven Valleys Visitor Information Centre, again has uh, Seven Valleys there with the contact details. Uh, one of the first things that uh, was done was uh, I was approached by uh, the Zigzag Railway and Outback Jess for producing these spoto books. Uh, these will be sold uh, at the Zigzag Railway when it uh, reopens uh, at the visitor centre and they're quite popular around the state. That uh, has Seven Valleys in there, the Seven Valleys Visitor Information Centre and a blurb on on the Seven Valleys. Social media has all been updated as well. So TripAdvisor, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, all, uh, all advertising Seven Valleys. Uh, we have an ongoing campaign at the moment, uh, the video campaign for uh, with the Seven Valleys video, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to play at the end. Uh, that uh, has uh, yeah, it's it has been very very well received uh, and has some great numbers, uh, and we'll be looking to add to that over the coming months with uh, with more material. Uh, obviously, one of the biggest things for brand activation is uh, association uh, with with other things such as events uh, and two of our biggest events, which are Lithgow Halloween and Lithglow uh, have that Seven Valleys Association as well. Uh, and uh, we put out a, a monthly newsletter to, uh, and a monthly mail out to uh, the subscribers to the Seven Valleys website, uh, which again has Seven Valleys on there. Uh, we are uh, entering uh, into an agreement with a TV show, uh, Pat Callan's Four by Four Adventures, uh, and that will be branded as a Seven Valleys episode, a uh, exclusive episode that is uh, basically uh, Pat Callahan is from uh, the Blue Mountains, from Blacksland, I believe, and so he will be pitching that as a as a kind of his backyard uh, episode. Uh, so, yeah, that will be a great one for activation uh, within that uh, target market, which is uh, quite a big one for us. Uh, Rocky Trail Entertainment that, ho that holds the uh, Jet Black 24-hour. Uh, uh, they, this year, are hosting the Australian Cycling 24-hour Solo National Championships, uh, and they will be advertising that as being within the Seven Valleys. Uh, and just recently as well, we had the uh, uh, Australian Caravan Club uh, attend uh, in Lithgow at the showground, and that event was entitled the Seven Valleys Muster. Uh, and the organising committee said that they saw great, uh, great merit in the Seven Valleys brand and uh, were delighted to title it as the Seven Valleys Muster. So uh, yeah, what I have on screen here are the things that we have in production now that are not quite ready. So we have our own marquees, uh, we have the visitor guide, which will hopefully be produced uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, we've got uh, the teardrop flags, the, uh, the, the flags that will go on the 
um, on flag poles around Lithgow, Portland and Willowing, souvenirs for the visitor centre um, and pull up banners as well. So lots of marketing collateral that will be able to uh, be taken to things like trade shows and other places to advertise the Seven Valleys. Um, this shows the power of events. Uh, this is just a, an indication of uh, the month of October and the amount of interest generated uh, by Lithgow Halloween. Uh, and so therefore, yeah, it's an indication of how much exposure has been uh, the, the Seven Valleys brand has had uh, because of that. So on our website alone, 21,000 uh, unique page, oh, sorry, 18,000 unique page views. Uh, 21,000 actual views and social media 98,000 um, uh, reach uh, for uh, for Lithgow Halloween so and as you'll see in a minute that what we were advertising was the uh, the video for Lithgow Halloween uh, so yeah this is uh, the Lithgow Halloween video Sorry? Yep. So that video was shown on, uh, on, on Win and uh, Channel 7 uh, for a three week period. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, yeah, widely watched. Uh, and the other one that we have on rotation on our social media channels at the moment uh, is this video. Of, uh, of stock footage that we uh, have retained from previous years has gone into that. I'm working with local uh, photographers and videographers to, to get more creative assets in that space. Um, otherwise, the other things that we're doing are looking at uh, working with the, uh, the steering committee, the tourism steering committee, um, to, uh, to develop a destination management plan uh, that will provide a focus to the local industry to, to sell the Seven Valleys. Obviously, there's encouragement to any new businesses to use that, uh, to leverage off that Seven Valleys brand as well, which uh, I am encouraged to hear some whisperings of people that are looking to do that, which is great. So, um, yeah, I think uh, they, they are examples of, of how we are activating the Seven Valleys brand uh, at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Francis. That was an excellent um, report, and I can see that uh, you know the activation of what you're doing. Seven Valleys is definitely working. I'm going to go back now to the mover of that motion, Councillor McGee, and then come back to Councillor Goodwin, and then people can then take part in if you would like to discuss any or uh, anything to do with that uh, particular section of our meeting tonight, Councillor McGee. Yes, thanks, Mayor Statham. Yeah, that's that's really well done. Uh, looking really good. I think that it could work in well with the um, when you get a copy of the one that the caravan people did. Uh, they did a cracker one as well. Just sort of focused a bit more on e an example of each of the valleys, and uh, worked really well. Uh, certainly got the people in the caravan area excited to go and see and visit each individual valley. So yeah, that was good. But you're on the right track, definitely. Councillor Goodwin. Thank you, Mayor Statham. Um, the Seven Valleys brand was a fantastic initiative from the Lithgow Council for most 
of the council could see the brand would bring tourism and a talking point to the Lithgow area. Some of the councillors couldn't see this until the last couple of days, until speaking to people from outside the Lithgow area. But I'm glad they see it now. It just makes me wonder what else these councillors can't see for the future of Lithgow until it's introduced and doing well. Maybe it's just old thinking or no forward visioning from it for anything. But maybe they're scared of change. But I love the branding. It brings a talking point to the Lithgow area and it gives people some imagination of what's in these areas and it increases tourism. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goodwin. The General Manager just suggested that I'll suspend standing orders and that if you feel like asking a question just casually or uh, a question to Mr Francis, uh, feel free to do that. So, uh, Councillor O'Connor. Uh, I just got a question on the um, that big sign on, in this side of Mount Lambie. It's of Donkey Mountain. Surely we could uh, put something better there for show off some of the valleys or show off something than uh, a big lump of rock, if you get my meaning. Thank you. Uh, the, it, was, it was chosen, obviously, for the visual appeal. Um, it, it does obviously show down into the Walgan Valley, so it is one of the valleys. But, yeah, we're looking to evolve the, uh, you know, those market... Uh, offerings uh, all the time. We we also, uh, what I failed to mention uh, in my presentation there was the other activation part is that we're looking to put some LGA signage so that when people drive in, uh, a lot of people obviously are driving, uh, increasing amount of people are driving to the Seven Valleys to partake in all the different things there are to see and do because it takes so long to get around and see it. They need far, far, far more than just one or two days to do that. But should they be driving through to Orange or Mudgee or Bathurst, then uh, they will have yeah, no doubts as to where the Seven Valleys starts and ends because, uh, yes, I intend to uh, very economically but very visibly uh, put signposts on the borders of the LGA that say welcome to and thank you for visiting the Seven Valleys. Councillor Bryce? No, I, was, I was just going to talk about getting some signage on the uh, road to Mudgee as well and the road back to Mudgee because the, the traffic through there is quite, quite yeah. intense on weekends and even during the week, so it would be good for them to be able to see what else is at Lithgow rather than drive through mm -hmm. but actually stop. I, I'm pretty excited about the Seven Valleys. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a great idea encompassing the whole of Lithgow rather than just Lithgow mm -hmm. and um, the whole LGA. It's a bit like the Hunter Valley, how it encompasses quite a few LGAs within the Hunter Valley, which is a really... Everyone, um, you know, when you go to the Hunter Valley, you go to the Hunter Valley, but it could be Cessnock, Ma Musselbrook, Maitland, you know, wherever they are, but coming to the Seven Valleys, it's still within our LGA and really good program. Any wishing to make a comment? Uh, just a brief comment. Uh, just... a. Uh, uh, a mechanical thing. I've, I've been approached by a number of people around the copywriting of it. Um, so, for instance, someone's interested in Seven Valley produce. Um, how do we manage that? Um, I've, I, like all the councillors who have spoken, agree it's a really great initiative and I've spoken to this before and, you know, it's got links back into lots of old stories, whether it's the Seven Sisters stories or the uh, so going back into Greek mythology, all that, that, that sort of stuff. So there's some great um, imagery of folks. So I, I agree with what's been said earlier. But as people adopt it as a brand and as a, a value, um, is, is that brand owned by anyone? That's, that's, that's just a question. Mr Francis? Uh, well, the, the brand has been developed by Lithgow City Council. Um, but obviously that is developed for the betterment and the fulfilment of the people within the, uh, the local government area. Um, and so, yeah, we currently have people uh, in the local government area leveraging off other brands. Uh, ideally, yeah, I would like to see people leveraging off that Seven Valleys brand. Uh, so, yeah, look, there, we have put a copyright on the logo itself uh, that can be used for tourism purposes. We will allow that to be used, and we want that, ident you know, that identification. Uh, the 
the Seven Valleys uh, branding is being very carefully handled so that the tourism signs, the tourism entry signs that I mentioned, the LGA entry signs, uh, will be designed to, to fit look and feel with the website, with the visitor guide, with the in-house marketing collateral uh, and with any additional uh, interpretive signage and directional signage that may be uh, forthcoming in future years around the, uh, the local government area. So yeah, look really in, uh, in answering your question, Councillor Marty, yes, I definitely would encourage people to be using the term Seven Valleys um, for yeah, particularly for tourism purposes, yes. Just one other quick question. Given a lot of the emphasis on natural features and ecotourism, uh, I know I've spoken to this previously, but can we look into um, nature-based recreation licensing and ecotourism licensing where our reserves are being utilised for commercial purposes? Uh, because I, 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 I think I share most people's view that the, the the tourism numbers are going to increase and whilst they're very modest in most councils that apply them, they're really just about uh, setting standards for practice and very minimal fees, but it does bring a small income into the council. Um, if I could ask, as time permits, that maybe that be looked at. Thank you, Councillor Marnie. Uh, something that I would like Mr Francis to look into, we have a very good relationship with Bathurst Council and their staff. The World Cross Country Championships are on in Bathurst next year and uh, I feel very sure that there'll be a lot of people after they've run who want to spend time in our areas and it'd be nice for us to capture that as opposed to Orange or out further west. So that's something I'd urge you to look at. That's um, coming up sort of May-June, I think. But they're talking about accommodation and all kinds of things at the moment. So the Seven Valleys would be, I don't know how you'll go about doing that, but it'd be worthwhile looking into. <coughs> Sorry, Miss Latham. Uh, the, yes, the Australian Cross Country Championships are being held in Bathurst next year. And I know lots of people that are coming to Australia. And know a lot of people around our area that are going to be, you know, making lots of money from this. So we need to be able to provide Bathurst <coughs> Council you know, we get on very well with our neighbours, so I think we need to be able to discuss with them opportunities moving forward to discuss the Seven Valleys with their, um, you know, along with the Bathurst, uh, how they will promote their tourism. I'm quite sure they'll be quite happy to include us if we have some sort of arrangement made in the very near future. Ms. David, can I just say one thing? To, yeah. uh, through you to Simon or to the staff. Um, the, the signage coming into Lithgow where it says Lithgow, um, I think it says Wallerawang and, and different areas, that signage is starting to become a little bit um, out there, I think, yeah. run down. It looks like it looks weathered and, um, yeah, certain certain areas looks really terrible. Um, maybe we could, if we're looking at um, fixing them, maybe fixing them with the branding of Seven Valleys or Lithgow Seven Valleys or something in relation to something that's that really stands out and especially coming into the two parts of Lithgow from the east and the west. Uh, the general manager, myself and Mr Edgecombe have visited the jail in Kirkconnell Prison Farm and the signage, I'd all like you to have a look at the signage outside the correctional centre uh, at Marangaroo. It's amazing, they do that and that's on our agenda for next year. It's been on the agenda this year but there's been floods, floods and more floods and mm -hmm. Uh, we can only do what we can do, but that's certainly something. They've got um, a very reputable landscape gardener there at the moment who has service palaces and castles in England. So he's here in Lithgow living, and uh, we've already had some meetings and it's gone very well. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Um, the signage is not just at the Lithgow. It has to be like... I go to Cullen every day and the sign at Cullen Bullen is horrendous. You can't even read Cullen Bullen. You know, it, it doesn't, it needs to be from all sides as well. Uh, we have a plan and I think at the moment the RMS had to come on board. They've definitely come on board. We've signed a memorandum of understanding as we have done with the jail and uh, there will be all the villages eventually. One's as important as the other but the three that will be done first will be Lithgow, 
Well, they're in Portland, and then after we're going to see if we can cooperate with progress associations and get uh, our branding all done the same. Thank you for those questions. It's great. We'll move on now to oh. Councillor McGee. Yeah, I'd just like to also add that um, I think a very special thank you and congratulations should go to Kerry and Larry Pitts from Good Forest for the amount of work that they did in getting the Seven Valleys brand up and running and registering it and things like that and then handing all of that information over to Council very early in the piece. They did a tremendous amount of work and uh, I think it's very important that they do get recognition for that. Um, also, is there something that we can do with the Information Centre, even if it's reflected or something, but that sign, you, you can't read it, you know, like is there a way to get it turned around so that people driving past, like I'm, I've never been able to read that sign and I'm the driver, but yeah, I couldn't look left that long enough to read that. I presume you're talking about the digital sign, is that correct? Uh, yeah, look, we'll certainly investigate it. I know that at the time, the sign itself cost uh, $11,000, I believe. Uh, that was, yeah, probably about 10 years ago. Um, the, obviously, the problem is that it needs to be viewed from both directions. Uh, so, yeah, we can kind of angle it, I suppose, but then you're not going to be able to see it from, you know, a certain direction. Uh, but, yeah, definitely take that you know, question on... Uh, and investigate some ways of making sure that it can be seen better, if possible. Uh, I totally understand that, and the general manager knows my feeling on that, and Jonathan, uh, Mr Richkin, it uh, needs to be so that it's double-sided, or we put up with that until we can find something better. Thank you for that. I'll close that, um, that part of the meeting now and move on to the next item. Thank you. Yeah. Very good presentation, Mr. Francis. 5.2 Lithgow Emerging Economy Project. Can I have somebody move that? Thank you. I'll move it. Councillor Bryce. Have a second to thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marnie. We'll, uh, we'll do the same what we've done before because we've suspended standing orders. I've got a mover and a seconder. So we'll ask um, Mr. Edgecombe now to deliver some information regarding this report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Statham. Do we have a presentation? Yeah. Yep. I just can't see it. Mayor Statham, I've got a, a message um, saying that people can't see the, um, the presentations on oh, the website. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll do my very best. Can we just explain that for the public? Yeah. So just for the public viewing, we do apologise, but um, in a technology sense, we're not able this evening um, to display uh, the presentations that the councillors are seeing within the building. We'll post them on the website uh, tomorrow. We do apologise. So with respect to the LEAP project, um, I'm going to present three brief um, uh, presentations this afternoon, and both of them are interlinked. Um, we're at a very important time of Lithgow's future. Um, we are, you know, in the, in the wake of the Wallerowa enclosure, and there are announcements uh, on, the, uh, on a regular basis regarding the future of coal mining and power stations across Australia and New South Wales. So our diversification and uh, to transition away from coal and coal-related industries is a very topical discussion. But there are also a lot of moving parts. We're working directly uh, with the Department of New South Wales, Regional New South Wales, who are the predominant funder of this project, and we thank them significantly for their investment in our region. But we're also working directly with uh, members of our local industry and community also to engage on, on the LEAP project. Uh, but with respect to the Lithgow Emerging Economy Project, uh, where are we at currently? Um, the, the, the project itself it comprises five separate parts. 
Uh, the first of those is an assessment of where the Lithgow region is today in terms of its, uh, of its uh, economic, um, what would you call it, its current economic activity, but also its demographics and what its industry breakdown looks like. Additionally, uh, this part of the report considers the current social and cultural mindsets of Lithgow's workforce and community and the core skills that they can offer industries of the future. Uh, with this understanding of the industry breakup, this first phase of the report considers the potential future scenarios um, uh, and the impact of uh, so the current strengths of our economy and the impact of shocks to those industries in the future. Uh, essentially, this is an assessment of today's position. Uh, the second phase of the report considers where, we're, where Lithgow is headed if there is to be no intervention and we take a do-nothing approach. Uh, this an analyses a, uh, an array of potential future industries, including their output, uh, job creation potential, and infrastructure reuse opportunities. Um, alongside the consideration of that do-nothing scenario, uh, we also consider the, uh, a converse approach, which is uh, direct government and, and private industry and local government uh, intervention in the process and uh, the potential for a focused approach with respect to that intervention. The, the report considers what uh, potential, um, potential diversification scenarios uh, with a distinct focus on how Lithgow can retain local value from those assets post uh, any new assets or existing assets post construction, uh, engagement with local stakeholders and the overlay of existing strategies developed by the New South Wales government such as their energy transition strategies and policy frameworks. Uh, it also in, in a large part considers what's necessary for a just transition. Uh, what I mean by a just transition is considering the livelihoods of members of our community, not just jobs, and acknowledging that the negative impacts of a transition or of a diversification effort can impact those most, most vulnerable in our community, and, and it, it considers what's needed to address those needs on a broad scale. So essentially that's what tomorrow looks like. Uh, the third phase of the report is what's needed to address that gap between phase one and two, where we are now and where, we're, where we could be headed tomorrow if we take the right um, intervention measures. Included in this section are considerations of how to make best of Lithgow's um, natural capital assets. Those include our water supplies and environmental assets, as we just saw regarding the Seven Valleys, uh, how they can be used to support tourism, for example and infrastructure reuse opportunities with a, with a key focus on Lithgow's existing assets in terms of uh, energy production and the demand for new infrastructure investment. Um, notably, a key part of that will be the uh, Great Western Highway upgrade uh, in terms of transport infrastructure. Um, and thirdly, uh, this phase of the document yeah, uh, considers the demand for social infrastructure. If we're to engage with workforces of, of the future and attract people into our region, we need to consider how we're to supply the necessary social infrastructure, um, make um, good consideration of pl placemaking, uh, development of precinct plans for those separate areas of our LGA and our sporting precincts and the like, and the best use of those land endowments that we have at our disposal. All of that is tied up into a proposed vision statement of the Lithgow economy. Uh, and the fourth and fifth stages of the report consider the key enablers and the plan of action to address them. So by enablers, I'm talking about things like uh, education programs to upskill our community, uh, the uh, construction of water pipelines to service heavy industrial lands, um, to uh, or... or, or um, uh, as we saw the Seven Valleys a moment ago, again, um, uh, tourism um, strategies to enhance our tourism economy and attract workers and visitors to our region. They are the key enablers and the plan of action subsequent uh, addresses 
what's required of local government, private industry and uh, federal and state governments to assist us to meet our vision in terms of diversifying our economy. So in terms of where we're at at the moment, uh, we're currently in the middle of phase three, which is determining what's needed. So we've identified that there are uh, an array of um, an array of industries which could be uh, focused on to, to support Lithgow's um, transition and diversification efforts, but uh, the, the, we're currently in the process of, of process of identifying those enablers and consulting and, commu and communicating those with industry, government and our community. In terms of the baseline analysis, which is phase one of the report, which we've recently completed, um, we have a set of baseline findings which have, which have really informed where Lithgow's at at the moment and um, set the scene for where those enablers and resultant actions lie. For example, we know that Lithgow's population has shrunk between 1 and 2 per cent between 2016 and 2021, and our projections have the population expected to plateau with an ageing demographic. This isn't just a, 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 a negative, this could be a positive as it uh, gives a precursor for the identification of health precincts and, and industries uh, to support our ageing population. We've also identified that there is a significant socio-economic disadvantage across the LGA when compared to New South Wales with a slightly higher disadvantage in the Lithgow Township than the Lithgow region. Uh, the, um, uh, the People of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander descent make up 7.8% of the population, while only 6.2% speak a language other than English at home. Uh, unemployment, until recently, unemployment in Lithgow has been high relative to regional New South Wales and New South Wales as a whole. With low unemployment, the workforce for growing or emerging industries may need to be drawn from existing industries or attracted from outside the LGA. And generally, it appears that housing is more affordable in Lithgow than the wider state, including regional New South Wales. I apologise for the small text, um, but uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, alongside the demographics, the baseline considers our economic profile as well. Um, in short, uh, Lithgow's value add is highly concentrated in coal mining and electricity supply. Uh, this clearly suggests that our economy is vulnerable to these shocks and these subsectors. Additionally, the tourism industry is not a current major contributor. However, offerings and activity mix undertaken are similar to the Blue Mountains. Uh, and there's also been significant uh, uh, commitment to investment in the Lithgow LGA, notably the $50 million Gardens of Stone proposal. Uh, through which we're working very closely with National Parks and Wildlife Services to, to ensure that that project sees as much value uh, added to the Lithgow region as humanly possible. Uh, and uh, third, Lithgow's employment in co is concentrated in healthcare and social assistance, mining, public administration and safety. Uh, to us, this suggests that the economy is vulnerable to the shocks in these sectors, but if supported, they could also act as uh, almost the backbone to the Lithgow LGA and offer some sort of longevity and, and uh, long-term long support. So in terms of the baseline findings, uh, uh, assuming a do-nothing approach, uh, there are significant workforce impacts and social impacts. These really speak to the need for Lithgow to, uh, for, it speaks of the need of the LEAP project generally. Uh, it, it's, it, we are at a, at a crucial point in our future and targeted intervention is required if, if we're to uh, influence significant change over the next 10 years. So workforce impacts, uh, if, if our minds were to, to close overnight, uh, uh, the, there's the potential loss of over 900 jobs. Uh, there's a large, and of those, there is a large proportion of high paying jobs and, and an industry specific skilled workforce behind it. And the potential flow on impacts could result in a shrinkage of the wider economy by roughly 2,000 2, jobs. And in terms of the social impact, um, those jobs aren't just jobs, they're people. They are people in our, in our LGA 
and they, uh, it would result in a changing de demographic if our mining workers were to move away from Lithgow. Um, mining workers represent a younger and, l and larger households than are average in the LGA. Uh, we would uh, inevitably uh, suffer the loss of worker contributions to the community and, and those companies who offer themselves significant contributions to our community, whether it be financially or otherwise. So that moves into us into um, phase two and three, which as I mentioned before, uh, that th these aspects of the report identify some key industries that uh, in our view, uh, the, the, this council uh, and our government and private industry could focus on if we're to uh, diversify our economy and, and, and move from strength to strength. At the moment, uh, all of the advice that we've received and the research conducted points to three major growth sectors. Uh, those are electricity, gas, water and waste services. Uh, the key points in that area are that uh, we have significant existing electricity, transport and I, um, IT resources in the Lithgow uh, LGA. We also have um, volumes of natural endowments, including water resources and the ability to generate electricity from solar. And we have a workforce with transferable skills. Uh, the potential there essentially is to um, pivot from coal-fired power and electricity generation to renewables, including the development of solar power, pumped hydro, battery storage, and uh, green hydrogen generation for um, transport networks of the future. Uh, the second suggested or, or potential growth sector is manufacturing. Uh, Lithgow, regardless of its transition, will always have a strong heritage and history as a centre of in industrial innovation and manufacturing. Uh, that's something that we can't lose sight of um, and there is significant um, uh, potential for us to move into uh, clean manufacturing uh, opportunities, including uh, defence and metal fabrication, uh, renewable energy component manufacturing as well, uh, and as well as cir circular economy manufacturing and transport. Uh, additionally, uh, we have, similar to the electricity um, industry, we have a workforce with transferable skills, and we have good links to transport infrastructure, including our proximity to both Western Sydney and the Central West, to uh, facilitate that industry as well. And third, uh, tourism. Uh, I won't rehash a lot of what um, Simon just mentioned, but we, uh, it's, we have an abundance of natural assets. Um, we, we also recognise the significance of our Indigenous uh, heritage assets that are, that are located throughout our broad LGA. And there's a, a, a lack of saturation. We have things that not many, uh, no one else has. We have our seven valleys, for example. And third, uh, again, they're the proximity to Sydney to complement uh, our neighbouring regions. Lastly, there, uh, I mentioned a second ago, the key foundational sectors. Those are sectors which already exist but have the potential, if, if supported with um, targeted uh, intervention, have the ability to um, continue to grow and further support Lithgow in the future. Our healthcare and ageing social assistance industry uh, is established and well integrated within our existing community and there's a high, there's, as I mentioned in the previous demographic slide, there's a high and increasing demand for those services including from our existing ageing population. Uh, and second there, public administration and safety. Um, we, we have, uh, there's an established existing industry including statewide public services, state debt and the correctional centre for example. We have good geographic positioning with respect to our central centrality uh, with the Sydney Basin and the Central West. And uh, there are cost advantages being our cheaper land and uh, construction for um, relative to Sydney. So where to from here? Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're most of the way through phase three and we're heading into phase four and five, which are the identification of the key enablers and what that plan of action will look like. There are a number of stakeholders which uh, must buy in to those enablers and those that plan of action, which necessitates that we communicate, consult and workshop this strategy as broadly as possible. So 
moving forward, while it was unfortunate, um, the, we have organised and will continue to organise an industry government workshop where we aim to bring in uh, leaders from our um, uh, from local businesses and local industry and and combine them with with the pillars of um, the bureaucracy of um, state government and the like to 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 workshop those enablers, uh, consider where they fall short or what their strengths are. And to, to in attempt to um, get buy-in as to what those are, whose responsibility falls where, and how we can work together to deliver those mutual outcomes for the Lithgow community. Uh, there's also to be a series of two community information forums. Um, we aim to have those relatively small, roughly 20 to 30 participants, so that we can engage directly, but we also look to to speak directly to those pillars of our community, be it um, the heads of sporting organisations, um, the, the, the Lithgow Chamber of Commerce, we look forward to directly engaging with them on this project, and any of those other community groups that offer um, that are very in touch with, with their representative communities. From those two or three sessions, um, there will be a collation of those findings into final reports, at which point there will be direct engagement and more detail provided to the council. Then there'll be a final peer review, um, which has occurred throughout each stage of the process to date. We, we have um, engaged directly with experts in the field, notably Neil Perry, from, uh, uh, who's, who is an associate professor at the Western Sydney University. He's provided us with extremely valuable information and we thank him very much for his efforts. And uh, ideally, um, this project would have been completed in November, but there have been a couple of delays and we feel that it's important to engage deeply reg regarding the project, but also review the findings to date to make sure that they're sound and um, academically rigorous. So uh, idea, uh, final completion we expect at this point to be around January, February, but uh, th that has not yet been um, nailed down uh, uh, exactly. So post-completion, uh, once the project's been developed, um, we, we aim to plan early for closure and change and, introduce, and have clear leadership in this process through those community consultation workshops and information forums. Uh, we hope to have um, the, uh, the ad adequate buy-in from state and federal government, but also those partnerships in place so that we can work together and uh, shape Lithgow's economy uh, in the best way for the future. Um, importantly, uh, this will take time. Uh, research from the Grattan Institute and the Australian Productivity Commission uh, demonstrates that uh, successful transitions take up to 10 years to reach their end result. And there's significant financial investment that is attached to that as well. So it's imperative that we, it, it's, it's good that we've started now, but we must press ahead with some urgency. Uh, as I mentioned before, there needs to be a mix of public and private investment. Uh, we all need to work together to achieve these outcomes. And we need to make sure that there's inclusion and equity, that just transition discussion that I mentioned before. And lastly, um, given the in industrial nature of our existing industry, uh, we need to make sure that the um, uh, rehabilitation of our environment can, proceeds in, in an in a, uh, environmentally sustainable manner that uh, is, is, is most beneficial for ge employment generation into the future. So I think that's it for the LEAP project. Yeah, I just wanted to make one point drawing from Jonathan's presentation. I thought that was great, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, uh, we're planning early. Um, we're not planning for early closures. Um, the situation is um, that uh, Energy Australia uh, have publicly committed that uh, Mount Pipe will run till 2040 and the supporting coal mines are similarly. Um, but uh, we know um, that uh, the transformation of an economy uh, is complex uh, and lengthy in duration. Uh, and uh, uh, we're hoping that we're going early, um, but perhaps we're not. It's another day, so every other day you hear about uh, reforms in the energy space. Uh, we can't wait. Around 40% of our, the value created in this city is created from mining and energy generation. So we want to plan early and implement early uh, because it will be a multi-year uh, re 
um, program and requiring significant investment and uh, you know we need the private sector federal state and local council are uh, all pulling on the one on the one uh, rope uh, that rope we hope is the action plan I'm quite excited about the work that's being done uh, the the deep thinking that's going into it um, the fact that we're very much looking uh, to play to Lithgow's unique strength. It's too often the case, um, that, and this speaks to some other reports later in this committee, uh, that a council boasts uh, that they have these attributes uniquely. Um, that's not the case very often. Um, so we're very much making sure that it's grounded in uh, Lithgow's endowments. It's agnostic uh, to sectors. Uh, we really want to play to those endowments, then provide the supporting infrastructure and we want to play a short term, a medium term and a long term game and uh, take uh, all of the community with us. We need to be investing more vigorously by way of example in, uh, in, the, uh, in our schools um, and we need to be ensuring uh, that the schools and the children emerging from those schools have the skills that will equip them for the future, not for the past. Um, so it's a really deep process, a deep dive. Um, and I look forward to um, reporting back on the next stages. But I just wanted to particularly start with making that point that we're planning early, not planning for early closures. Um, thank you. Thank you to the general manager. Thank you, Mr. Edgecombe. It was a terrific report. Um, you moved the motion, Councillor Bryce. Would you like to speak to that? And uh, I'll put the motion after we've done that and we'll have discussions. Um, I'm really excited about this project and moving forward. It was a great presentation. Um, you know, Lithgow has a lot of potential and it's and I th it would be lovely to see that being used. Um, at one of our information sessions, the resources for rejuvenation was committees and that. Is that going to be part of this LEAP program? Through you, Mayor Statham, all, all opportunities proposed by government, the, the, this is a... a, a, a document that's going to be grounded in, in reality. It's going to be very pragmatic in its approach. So any diversification in initiatives proposed by the government, whether it be uh, investment initiatives like the resource uh, royalties for reju rejuvenation or otherwise, are going to be deeply embedded in this so that uh, when those levers and uh, enablers are identified, that we have the means to make them a reality. Uh, Councillor Marnie? Just to reiterate Councillor Bryce's comments here, look, a really well presented um, overview on where this is going. Um, it was full of some really important trends and I, I appreciated that you've recognised the employment trends and as we've some of the groups that are moving forward, such as health and particularly aged care and although there's those risks carried for the mining sector, I was pleased it wasn't just a report about statistic and data. I really appreciated the commentary on the human and social impacts of the loss of the mining sector's workers and their roles in community life. Um, it's not simply we learn lose economic value, but we also lose important social and community uh, participation. So the other, the other point I'd, I'd like to make, I've watched some of the transitional processes going on in other areas such as the Latrobe Valley and so on. I think we've got to be careful of things not being linear and sequential, that we wait for something to happen to respond. I prefer the concept of diversification rather than transition, because diversification can happen at any time during the economy. It doesn't wait for an impending collapse to start the process. So, um, and, and your presentation spoke to that. Um, at looking at some of the emerging opportunities in our economy. So, thank you. Uh, I'm going to put the motion, then we'll have a discussion. Thank you. I'd like to be able to speak to the motion before it's put. All right, no worries at all. Uh, let's go emerging economic project. I think this actually could have a subheading called how to transition to the future. And and I'd like to congratulate the, the writers of it, the author of it, uh, uh, Mr. Edgecombe, uh, for actually, although the word, although there's no specific item in this report dealing specifically with transition, it's 
it's inherent right through the whole document. You, the, the word transition appears, you know, four or five times, the transitioning appears. Uh, and and this is, this is a wonderful change for Lithgow Council. With only a few years ago, the very word transition would, would bring howls of rage, you know, from, from some of our former councillors. Uh, but along with the word climate change in, in the wider community, the word transition is now an acceptable concept in our, in our society. It's, it's so important because without acknowledging the, the, necess the necessity for it, you know, no change can happen. Uh, but once you acknowledge it, then the whole mindset changes. And, you, and every, every time you, you wish to think about what should we do next or how do we do it, even without the word, the process is there. And, and I appreciated uh, Councillor Marty's comment, which he actually used another word, diversification. Now, that's so important too. I hadn't, uh, hadn't realised that. I'm not always at the forefront of these things. I, I like these, these uh, committees so that you can actually catch up with some of the issues and concepts that, you know, that are outside my own personal experience. But it's, it's, it's very valuable to me, and, and I think this um, Lithgow Emerging Economy Project is a very valuable tool, and, and, I, and I really do support the, the work that's been done with it. Thank you, Councillor Leslie. Um, anybody else wishing to discuss something or ask a question? Councillor McGee? Yes, we've just had the, um, a big amalgamation between a Melbourne firm and an English firm who um, convert older cars to electric EVs, pure EVs. And I really think that that's part of the future, you know, and I was just sort of wondering as far as manufacturing and uh, recycling solar panels and manufacturing um, electric motors and generators, which would also go into not only EVs but also pumped hydro. Um, will we, like, what sort of opportunities would we be able to offer companies in the future, like, to attract them to, to do these works in Lithgow? As I mentioned earlier, the, the report is almost entirely agnostic to industry. So it's we're not targeting anybody in particular. It really is trying to sell Lithgow and every, everything that it has to offer and let the industry choose to come here. Um, but in terms of existing infrastructure, you're right. Um, the, our, our, uh, Australia is shifting towards renewables and uh, clean energy and, and, and clean tra transport, for example. Um, so so the, the report is, uh, those aspects are deeply embedded within it. It's not just, uh, for example, hydrogen conversion, but we're also looking at opportunities to repurpose existing rail assets, for example, to run on that hydrogen power um, because we have disused or, or, or um, uh, we have rail assets locally that could be repurposed for those purposes if the industry sees that there's an opportunity there. So again... It's not, we're trying not to be specific because if we put all of our winners in one basket and that fails, then the document falls flat and we, and we fall in the same trap as many other uh, diversification efforts have in the past. We really need to stay as open as possible so that we can focus on what, uh, what actions are required to push Lithgow into the future and let the industry choose and, and, and then market those opportunities to the industry accordingly. So just to add to that, um, so yeah, we're really focused on those enablers and then, um, then the market determines based upon um, those enablers uh, matching uh, their, their, their needs and wants. Um, so by way of example with the, the, the one that you're speaking about, so um, a skilled workforce, um, uh, apprentices, a uh, motivated workforce, um, power, affordable land, zoned land, um, so these are the things that are the enablers. And then, yes, you, you may be attractive to uh, an industry that's repurposing vehicles, under your example, um, but uh, 
we stand on this side of the counter, we don't develop companies and businesses and new sectors. So it, if you have the, the ecosystem of your city right, well then the sectors uh, hopefully, and you market it, the sectors find their way to you. I think the other final secret sauce um, goes into the nature of the local government body and the council uh, being open for business um, and uh, having a can-do attitude and uh, being an honourable partner with businesses wanting to locate in their city. There's not enough made of that, I believe. Um, and, and I think uh, that gives confidence uh, to people to invest also. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, before I go to your right of reply, would anyone else like to have uh, anybody else wishing to speak? Uh, Councillor Yes, Connor? Mayor. Um, I would be uh, encouraging the likes of Greenspot because if any industry wants to come here at the moment, where do you put them? There is no block of industrial land anywhere in this side of the town. So without industrial land and heavy industrial or whatever, there is no place to put anybody. And that's all I'm saying. It should be encouraged through an economic development manager that's pushing these people to get everything happening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Connor. General Manager. Oh, yes, you're absolutely right. And I'm segueing between uh, Mr Edgecombe and myself here, but drawing from my experience, um, yes, and uh, uh, please be excited about the LEAP exercise because uh, I believe that the action plan will canvas all of these issues. Um, it's long been said to me that if you start today um, with land that requires rezoning, it can be uh, no less than, um, let me say, six to eight years before you'll be turning a sod on a new development that requires that rezoning by the way, you find, time you find your way through the planning system, DA, uh, capital funding uh, and the like. So they're long time frames. So we, uh, we believe um, that uh, the LEAP uh, project will lead to uh, calling for a range of opportunity sites across the city but also working with government to see how we can compress down that time frame so that it's not six to eight years. We want to flatten, we want to provide the enabling infrastructure, work with government and squash down that, uh, that process to turn on uh, land that's currently unzoned. But we do have numerous brownfield sites and uh, alongside of uh, the Greenspot site, we surely looms as an opportunity site. Uh, and we're hopeful that the LEAP inspires our government and the private sector uh, to, uh, to look at bringing those forward. Any other councillor? Councillor Goodwin? Yeah, Mayor Statham, I see it as a really good um, initiative in the medium and the long term. However, the short term, we need to look at what's here and now and potentially ready to go. Um, very happy with the LEAP project and, and getting on to it very early. Um, that's extremely exciting. Um, I know it's a very holistic document. I'd like to see us target businesses that we know of in the area that are ready to go or potentially ready to go in the very short term and acknowledge it in the document maybe and target businesses in the medium and long term to attract businesses uh, in the medium term and to attract businesses in the long term. Uh, but I'm glad to hear that the general manager did, it did acknowledge and talk about this in his uh, summing up for the short, medium and long term. So. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Goodwin. And just before I put the motion or ask Councillor Bryce if she'd write a, write a reply, I have uh, suggested to the General Manager that we should contact um, the Federal Government through um, Andrew G, because they've made some announcements about two months ago, I think, to uh, say there's quite some funding for TAFE courses and to do with the TAFE. So I think that we should be trying to get people upskilled as quickly as possible. For example, a young gentleman from Portland I was speaking to him about three months ago and he was doing plastering and he wanted to do it locally. He was unable to do that. He went to Katoomba, he did his course, he came back and now he's in business and he's run off his feet. And I believe his work is excellent. So, you know, I think we should be able to get uh, something to help promote other courses at the TAFE besides the ones that are there. We know are grateful for the ones that are there, but we need now to look into people that are going to be able to build all these homes uh, in the event that these subdivisions around our local government area take place. And of course, uh, with the road coming through, we'll need new homes quite quickly. 
Um, Councillor Bryce, would you like to have a right of reply? Yeah. Um, um, I'm excited about this LEAP project. I came to Lithgow quite a few years ago um, when I was 16. I managed to get an apprenticeship as a fitter machinist within four months of starting. I worked at the small arms factory in manufacturing. It was a great place, so many skills, so many skilled people, and we lost that over the years. So to see that manufacturing will make, hopefully make a comeback in our LGA and the skills that comes with that, as well as any other industry that comes, you know, healthcare and aged care and all that, all brings sets of skills. We, are, we, we should be targeting semi-skilled and skilled workforce and which will be the great thing about this LEAP project. Mm. Right. Well said, Councillor Marnie. Uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Carry. Thank you. Point three, review of the Lithgow Regional Economic Development Strategy. Again, Mr Edgecombe, thank you. Yeah, I have a mover, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Uh, a second to thank you, Councillor O'Connor, thank you. Mr Edgecombe, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Statham. I will try to keep the, this one a little more brief than the last because I don't want anybody getting sick of my voice. But, <laughs> too late. Um, so, as I mentioned before, there's a great deal going on in the, uh, in, uh, at the moment regarding Lithgow's future and its economic outlook. Uh, in particular, uh, alongside the LEAP, there's the State Government, the Department of Regional New South Wales are working to review our regional economic development strategy. The first of these was uh, cr uh, written in 2018 and it, it really uh, uh, focused uh, at a, a level called uh, FERS, they call them functional economic regions. Uh, each that these uh, functional economic regions are uh, identified uh, based on where people travel for work, um, the, the local geography and a study of uh, local supply chains that feed into our, re our local industries. Lithgow is an outlier in this respect because we are one of the very few who, which, uh, where the LGA uh, directly aligns with the functional economic region. So we are standalone in that respect. We have our own regional economic development strategy. And it's come at a very good time for us to, uh, for, for the do this document to be reviewed because it directly aligns with the Lithgow Emerging Economy Plan. Uh, because the two documents in many ways attempt to achieve the same thing and, and do. Um, it, it, the, the, the regional economic development strategy is, um, uh, is produced based on data analysis, predominantly from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, but also has input from stakeholder workshops, uh, sorry, council submissions and local business surveys. And this input really ensures that the update reflects the local perspectives on the future of the region, plus any changes which may have occurred um, environmentally, economically or otherwise in terms of infrastructure investment um, in a local sense and aims to reflect that and the impacts on our economic outlook. Uh, the, the reason why it's important that the REDS um, review aligns with LEAP is that, that the Regional Economic Development Strategy in particular provides the evidence base for government uh, to, to make policy and investment decisions thereby providing a pathway for their own investment to in, in the growth of industries that drive Lithgow's economy and jobs. Um, and it's also important that we review this on a, some, on a regular basis because it's important that both documents uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that recent regional New South Wales has endured a number of shocks over the last four years in particular. Um, uh, my memory goes back to the 2019 bushfire and the impacts that had on our environment and our, and our residents and our businesses. And the <coughs> floods that we're expecting now, um, you know, we have five current natural disasters and that continues to, to um, you know, cr uh, create challenges for, for our residents and our, and our industry. COVID-19, mouse plagues, um, but alongside those there are other economic opportunities 
Uh, as I mentioned before, the state governments uh, committed $50 million to the Gardens of Stone and its development, and Council's working very closely to make sure that there are good local outcomes as a result of that project. And there's the Great Western Highway also. Um, but it's also pr um, uh, private industry that's had significant investment in our region. The um, Lithgow Transformation Hub has, has um, uh, Craig mentioned a moment ago, that we need to look to our workforces and, and uh, 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 provide additional skills to the existing workforces, but also uh, provide holistic education pathways for new workforces. And the Lithgow Transformation Hub and all of the academic uh, uh, endowments that that facility brings to our region goes a long way towards uh, identifying what those pathways are and the opportunities they bring. And there's also been uh, the investment in development of the Talus uh, Lithgow Arms facility. But similar to the LEAP project, um, the uh, REDS document outlines much of the same um, uh, statistics regarding employment and population locally. And it also, in, in um, very pleasingly, it identifies very similar industries that are potential avenues for Lithgow's growth, um, being tourism, electricity generation, transmission, and manufacturing being key engine and emerging industries in the Lithgow area. Um, so the next steps, it, it is still in draft form. Uh, we have an opportunity to comment on it and we will be doing so. It's uh, a, a rough date is set by the 4th of November, but there is going to be an information session between the bureaucracy of Department of Regional New South Wales and Council's administration tomorrow so that we can go through in more fine-grained detail what the changes are and then provide a draft, a, a, a written feedback to, the, to that um, to that document, which will then be, uh, will run through with the Council on, on that as well prior to any finalisation of the doc documentation which is expected in December or um, by the end of this year. Um, so that's, yeah, that's it in conclusion. Are there any questions? All right. Uh, thank you, Mr Edgecombe. Um, Councillor Bryce, would you like to speak to that? Um, the development of this document uh, aligning with LEAP will actually set us up for the state government to know where we're going and what we need to do to develop our economy. So again, very exciting. Um, it's sad to see that we lost 2.2% of the population, but hopefully we can grow that to um, to help our LGA um, become a better LGA in the future. But good report. Thank you, Jonathan. Oh, Mr. Enchkin. Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Councillor O'Connor? Uh, yes, Mayor. I can see the... Um Great Western Highway upgrade is going to bring a lot of benefits to Litco on the Central West because of the Western Sydney Airport, everything else that's going on, and also the uh, investment in Talus because mm. being where we are in the world, arms manufacturer is going to go bigger and bigger. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Connor. Um, any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Marnie? Uh, just a brief comment again. Uh, just noting in the two, I, I really appreciate, and this is something I think council's been quite good at. This, I'm, I'm talking to the staff at this stage, um, hopefully us as well, but uh, just having the community forums, I think going out and talking to the community about uh, significant and consequential changes um, really is a, is a credit to the staff. So I appreciate that those, those elements have been embedded in both these last two reports. Thank you, Councillor Marnie. Uh, Mr Etching would like just to uh, expand on that. Thank you. Uh, it's worth mentioning as well, that I, and I did mention a moment ago, um, it, which is my error, that the Department of Regional New South Wales hasn't just engaged with Council. They've held sessions at the, um, at the Lithgow Workmen's Club as well. And they've engaged directly with the Chamber of Commerce and other local leaders in, in our sort of industrial outlook as well in terms of getting their thoughts on the process, where Lithgow's uh, strengths are, challenges, and how Lithgow's grown or struggled over the last four years. So there has been much broader consultation than just council, and we greatly appreciate that. 
Thank you, Mr. Richard. Anyone else wishing to speak on that? No? Uh, write a reply, Councillor Bryce. Uh, just before we put the motion, uh, I watched a video the other day that was sent to me uh, about Ron Finnimore, and he's very excited about the proposal for the Great Western Highway development. Uh, I also heard since then that he's, um, you know, quite disappointed, but I think a lot of people are realise that it is something that we need long term. Uh, some of the things that I find a little bit confusing is employment and population. We've got a proposition of the population above 55 years has increased by 1.2% since 2018, but yet we're, you know, supposedly 2.2 population growth since 2018 has been negative. Uh, I think it's great to see we've got unemployment uh, has decreased. And, of course, now we have so many people now that would... Uh, so many people are worried about how they're going to fill their job vacancies. So uh, we hope that there's a trending change in this situation. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. The General Manager said Councillor Coleman has uh, rung in with her apology. Can I have somebody accept that apology, please? Thank you, Councillor Bryce, the seconder. Thank you, Councillor McGee. Thank you. Point four, development of an investment prospectus for Lithgow. Mr Edgecum. Last one, I promise, Mayor Statham. Yeah, <laughs> um, so... Uh, this is the third project that's been taken, uh, that, that's in progress uh, as a collaborative effort between Department of Regional New South Wales and Council and directly speaks to Lithgow's future. Um, I forget I have slides at times. Um, so essentially, and it also aligns with what, um, uh, somewhat with the Seven Valleys concept. Um, in, in June 2022, uh, representatives of Council and the LEAP project, including our consultants, uh, attended an investment attraction workshop uh, which was coordinated by the Department of Regional New South Wales. Uh, the intent of the program, which again I, I mentioned before, aligns with the Regional Economic Development Strategy and the development of that document and our Lithgow Emerging Economy Plan, is to assist both Council and Department of Regional New South Wales to build awareness and recognition of Lithgow as a city, uh, establish direct contact to potential investors in a targeted and strategic fashion, provide support and services to potential investors, build relationships with and support existing investors, and provide opportunity to enhance the quality of Lithgow in the eyes of investors. Much of the information that comes from this is also mirrored in both of the economic development strategies mentioned before. But, but enough, where it differs is that um, these analyses are de often developed with the understanding that councils can often pitch the same perceived opportunities in their area as they do their peers, whether it be neighbouring LGAs or otherwise. Uh, it, it, ca it can be the case that councils regularly use claims like uh, we offer an attractive lifestyle or um, we're centrally located or we have high quality labour. And while that might be the case, uh, it's, it is also often the case that your neighbouring council might offer exactly the same thing. And then we have, we uh, inevitably and un, un, unintentionally uh, dilute the benefits that we're selling to our investors or potential future investors. Essentially, they're, they're much too broad and generic. So the aim of this document is to work alongside LEAP and work alongside REDS, but also uh, uh, take uh, true consideration of Lithgow's competitive and comparative advantages with respect to our peers and sell and develop those into market strategies that are unique to the Lithgow region that we can take and sell directly to potential investors of the future and use to support existing industry as well. Uh, identifying those target of investors occurs in two parts. Firstly, there's the internal in assessment of, of Lithgow's location, which is what we've done through direct conversation and direct engagement with Department of Regional New South Wales. Uh, and we've workshopped 
in close collaboration, the region strengths our weaknesses and our opportunities and threats. Uh, we've considered what are the concrete opportunities for business in Lithgow's location, um, what are our advantages and opportunities in comp in, uh, compared to competitors, and how do we articulate and validate those specific value propositions. Second to that comes an external market assessment, which considers questions like um, which sectors and activities are experiencing significant growth, um, if there is investment, where is it occurring and why, uh, and what examples of those are there. So that's, in essence, why it's, 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 it's um, extremely beneficial that this is being developed now in, con in collaboration with the LEAP and the REDS. Uh, so in terms of um, the key endowments and strengths and challenges developed from this project to date, the, the draft um, the points of discussion at the moment are that we have significant existing heavy electrical infrastructure that is also mirrored in the LEAP and the REDS. Uh, we have a close proximity to Sydney being two and a half hours. Our transport connections are unrivaled. We can't, the, um, our peers to the east and west cannot say that they have the same proximity to Sydney, but also the same proximity to the, Sydney, to the central west. It's a very strategic geographic positioning. Uh, we have a significant quantity of potential industrial land if brownfield sites, former coal mines and power stations, can be repurposed for employment uses. We have significant quantities of water, uh, beginning with the 6,000 megalitres um, uh, from late 2024 and increasing uh, as coal mines are retired. Obviously, there are some enablers that require the unlocking of that potential, which the administration are working closely with the government on identifying potential pathways to navigate that and um, you know, uh, shrink that time frame of, of de delivering that to that industry. Um, uh, fifth, there's a relatively cheap housing, beginning with um, the potential of 1,500 lots in Marangaroo and uh, significant infill development uh, uh, on the east, on the western side of the highway as well through the South Bowenfells precinct. Uh, a cold climate relative to the rest of New South Wales. Um, I heard someone mention the other day, which is something that I hadn't actually considered, but data centres require significant cooling. Um, Lithgow's temperature is, is, um, is, is a significant benefit and could be targeted to those sorts of industries, but also um, food preparation and storage. Um, there are also opportunities there. Uh, proximity to the Blue Mountains workforce, we have um, significant advantages in terms of the arts and STEM education as we move to this um, move towards Sydney, which we could um, <coughs> couldn't make use of. And uh, on, on a point Councillor McGee made earlier, there is also large volumes of underutilised rail infrastructure and buildings throughout the Lithgow area as well. So identifying those key endowment strengths and challenges is just the first step. The next phase is to identify what those potential investor target groups are and how we can create that value proposition, create that narrative in order to sell Lithgow as in the best possible way. So. Um, uh, the, the, the document is with us in draft format at the moment. Again, it's open for, um, for feedback and commentary. And um, uh, once, the, once the document's delivered in its final form, there'll be further presentation to the council as to, as to what that looks like. Thank you for that comprehensive report, Mr. Edgecombe. Can I have somebody move this, please? Councillor Bryce, and have a second to thank you. Councillor Marnie, thank you. Councillor Bryce. Um, this is a good document. Thank you for that. Good report. I, um, it, it's great to see that these three presentations, the last three presentations, even the first one, all blend in to our future for our, for our LGA. It's, it's very exciting times for our LGA. Thanks for that. Councillor Money. Apologies. Um, just again, a really well considered report that's seeing the opportunities, not the constraints of our area. And uh, I really appreciate that style of thinking that's coming from council staff in, in a number of re reports we've received over the last 12 months. So, um, yeah, that, that, that certainly 
you know, excites me when we see the opportunities, not the limitations. So thank you for your report. Thank you, Councillor Marnie. Any other councillors? Councillor Goodwin? Yes, Mr. Statham. I really think this is exciting and it should be should have been canvassed years ago. Um, it would be great to see a big multinational investor and other investors uh, invest in our town. It's great to see that Lithgow Council is looking outwards to companies wanting to invest here. We need to be attractive to the investors and over my time at Council I've spoken to many developers and investors and all of them value their businesses, brands and name. None have ever said I want to come to Lithgow and ruin your town. They all say they want to come and they'll bend over backwards to enhance our town and bring it into the future. It's exciting and if we can attract huge investors it's a major opportunity for the development of our area. Yes, that's right, Councillor Goodwin, exactly. And I also think that because we've got such great, great proximity to Sydney, there's a lot of other um, options that we can take in terms of the highway improving, the Badgers Creek Airport. You know, if anybody's been to Nambucca Heads, or get online and have a look at the big service centre up there. Uh, I know I keep bringing it up, but it is something that would open up the Central West. Uh, people like Ron Finneymore, I'd love him to come here and speak as a guest. My brother knows him. Uh, I think we need somebody to come here and tell us how they battle with changing over, you know, their trailers. I have never been past Tunnel Hill where I haven't seen at least two trucks, three horse floats or one horse float in a car or something. It's certainly an opportunity that we need to into the future. There are a lot of other priorities at the moment, but I think after we find that uh, we get the results of the LEAP project, we can see that there are many other uh, things that qualify to think about into the future. Uh, Councillor Bryce, right of reply? All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Thank you. Terrific. Oh. All right, we just have a couple of uh, brief items on general business. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Uh, yeah, we just thought we'd take this opportunity, uh, as we can do in these committees, in a, a more relaxed manner, uh, just to provide a, a quick um, overview of uh, four other um, uh, projects or, or initiatives or activities that are occurring just at the moment that hook uh, back to economic development. I'll ask uh, Mr Edgecombe to speak to them now. So just in, in brief, um, the royalties for rejuvenation process uh, it was mentioned a moment ago, it is a significant opportunity for Lithgow to um, uh, advocate for some early wins as identified by both the Lithgow Emerging Economy Plan and the Regional Economic Development Strategy process. Uh, so we have, um, uh, when this was initially announced uh, through draft legislation, Council, um, uh, Council developed a, a response to that draft legislation um, essentially prioritising uh, a good, good practices of review in terms of measuring outcomes, but also ensuring that there's um, good probity pro processes in place in terms of ensuring that um, you know, in investment is, is evenly distributed and, and, and ensuring that, uh, that the investment that is available is directed to areas of greatest need. So uh, after that, uh, we also reached out to some key members of our local community to, uh, to bring awareness to the royalties for rejuvenation process because essentially um, it, will compri it comprises, I think it's 14 separate councils which have been split into four groups. Um, Lithgow's been um, grouped with Midwestern Council, we are the smallest group, um, and uh, each group is over, overseen by a panel of experts which feed projects directly to um, our Deputy pre Premier and, and local member. Uh, we reached out to um, key experts and um, uh, ac ac academics in our community to identify the opportunity for them to become panel members and uh, that process is in train now. Council provided some references to uh, when requested as well. So once, once those panels are ratified, which I 
think is between now and the end of this calendar year, I think, uh, they will meet on a regular basis to uh, consider proposals put forward by council, but also private industry in, uh, to facilitate Lithgow's uh, diversification particularly and distribute the funding allocations that it's provided accordingly. Um, in order to identify what are uh, potentially quick wins, we've, um, we're, we're working directly with uh, the University, uh, Western Sydney University and the staff at the Transformation Hub to develop a basic proposal. It's in very draft format at the moment, but a proposal to increase STEM engagement in our public schools so that we can start creating those holistic pathways from, from the start of education through to tertiary and, um, and university qualifications if that's needed or you know, um, vet courses or otherwise to try and uh, increase um, uh, the capacity of our labour workforce and workforces to engage directly with those industries of the future. That's just one project. As we move through, we'll be identifying others um, and work workshopping those with the council as well. Um, Main Street Retailing, um, I, I mentioned that after our um, most recent um, shop local campaign, which uh, was an initi initiative brought to us originally by the mayor, by Mayor Statham. Uh, but, but our view is that we can, this shouldn't be a one-off event. We need to increase our focus. We need to increase our engagement with our local businesses and, and work to uh, not just increase participation of businesses in those shop local campaigns, but also attempt to increase the participation of locals and, and the uh, awareness of our visitors in terms of what Lithgow can provide. So we can do that by offering attraction um, and promotions both through, uh, most recently, our, our, our campaign. We, had, uh, we, we partnered with the um, Live and Local, uh, 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 what would you call it, Live, the Live and Local group and um, with uh, an array of local music musicians coming into our main street. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to be able to align that with the Australian Caravan Muster as well, which was of great benefit. Um, and my wife shopped her heart out as well, so I know it was particularly beneficial from, from my perspective. Um, in terms of events, uh, the Council's uh, in, uh, very active in this space. Most recently, we've seen uh, an incredibly successful Halloween event. Um, I look forward to seeing uh, participating in the uh, internal debriefs on that project as to what we can do better next time how we can imp uh, improve participation of local business and industry, but also offer the best opportunities to a community that is struggling after COVID-19 and we're uh, are looking to come together through opportunities like this. Um, we also had the benefit of the Caravan Muster as well. Um, speaking from, um, uh, from a personal perspective, uh, my staff, all of council staff, sorry, put in a great deal of effort to make that event possible. Um, but it's worth noting that um, through that opportunity, we were able to de deliver some new permanent infrastructure at Tony Lucchetti so that we can uh, support more uh, events like this and we hope to attract them more often in the future. We hope they had a fantastic time and saw a lot of what Lithgow has to offer. And lastly, we're directly engaging with the organisers of IronFest as well to, to um, uh, to speak with them directly about uh, the future of their event and how we can work together if, uh, to, to investigate possible avenues to improve the viability of that event moving forward. Uh, and lastly, the Main Street revitalisation. Um, learning from stage one of that project, uh, we, we, we acknowledge that um, we could have done better with community consultation and the design process there. So this year we've set aside a full 12 months uh, to, to, to work on that detailed design and consult with uh, business owners and members of our community on what the Main Street revitalisation looks like and how the construction is phased. Um, we want to, as much as reasonably practicable, uh, reduce uh, any um, uh, adverse effects to businesses by avoiding uh, key shopping periods like Christmas but you know, it, it is a massive construction project. It is inevitable that we will have impact. We just need to make sure that that is broadly communicated and understood by our business community prior. But 
In terms of quality outcomes, we, we hope that the refresh of the main street will um, make the area more enticing to our locals, more enticing to visitors, uh, but we also hope for uh, more practical outcomes as well in terms of um, being able to deliver an asset that can be easily disturbed because all of our, um, all of our services run underneath the footpath and then restored um, promptly as well and left in a similar state as before, which isn't the case with our current assets. So we'll be communicating broadly um, uh, through direct consultation with our businesses. We'll hold community information sessions as well um, and hope to that this is the start of a, a, a really good um, project for the community. Thank you, Mr. Edgeham. That was a, another uh, terrific report. Just to keep us up to date for the councils, what is going on in our district. I had the opportunity to speak to the Hoskins family at length on Sunday, and they'd heard there was something happening at Blast Furnace, so they've asked for invitations to Lithgow's, uh, Lithglow next year when it's at Blast Furnace. Yes, uh, they're very excited about the prospect that they could go there and see what's happened to that site. Um, any further questions from any councillors? It's just a matter General of general business. It, Councillor, is this an opportunity to just comment on on the minutes of the last council of the last committee meeting, and in in, in specifically the the Hastings Wells Trails running event? Uh, I know it was briefly reported to a council meeting, but I was just wondering if we could get an update on that, and and just exactly if if there's any planning or currently happening for, for the event next year. Um, yeah, that, that's I did briefly read through the minutes, but unfortunately I didn't attend the last meeting. Um, we will take that on notice and provide an update to the to the broader council with some more information regarding the status of the trail running event. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Leslie, and thank you, Mr. Edgecombe. Anyone else wishing to speak? No? I'll close the meeting at 7.40. Thank you all for attending, and thank you to the staff. Again, they've mm. done a mighty job. Thank you. Oh, the first item, yes, uh, 5.1. Could I have somebody? I just want to put the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Seconded. Councillor Goodwin. All those in favour say aye. Oh, I did have move it and second it, and we had a lot of discussion, but I, I said where I had put the motion, but it was remiss of me. I moved on to the next item. That's just That was just a formality. Thank you, Councillor Leslie. All right, thank you all for coming. The meeting is now closed. Thank you.